Professor Borlaug, welcome to this podcast series. You've been studying the internet and internet-enabled businesses for more than 10 years already, and now you're getting into Web 2.0. The press is full of Web 2.0 related studies. Uh, YouTube Beats, MTV, Wikipedia Beats, Encyclopedia Britannica, Blogger Beats, CNN.com. What is, in your opinion, actually going on here? And why should the average manager care about Web 2.0? Is it just a hype, or do you think there's something more behind it? Well, I think that um, the examples you mentioned, like YouTube and Wikipedia versus uh, MTV, or the Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, show that in many industries, or in many um, sectors, if you wish, uh, the creativity of many uh, can surpass the creativity of few, no matter how uh, well educated or elaborate these few are. Uh, I believe that uh, the Wikipedia per se, which is, um, as you know, uh, um, uh, many people edited or millions of people potentially edited um, uh, content uh, has been proven to be um, as accurate in, in, in the tests that have been made as uh, encyclopedias developed by professionals. That, I think, tells us that if you put together technology to harness uh, the power of many, um, this is uh, probably unbeatable. Does that mean that this will work for any industries? I don't see, uh, let's say, an airplane designed by uh, uh, Wiki, uh, at least in the foreseeable future. Um, but I can see uh, a kernel made by somebody and then additions to that kernel that make a more friendly plane. In fact, that's what Linux is. Uh, somebody created very professionally the center of Linux and the additions and the add-ons and the graphical user interfaces and these things have been done by many anonymous people that, that and have made a product which in fact beats professionally developed operating systems. So is this a hype? I don't think it's a hype. Will this uh, um, disrupt all industries as we know them? I don't think it will. But it has the potential of doing it to many. Going on with this, Web 2.0 has very often been coined as changing work practices in companies since, since the blogs and the wikis and, and other ways of collaboration uh, could tend to change a lot how people actually behave internally, relate internally, and use their knowledge internally. Um, do you think that companies in general should start looking at this and probably incorporating this? And if they should, how would you recommend them to start? This is a very interesting point. In, in the inner works of companies, we, where part of what companies do is to share information and to elaborate procedures and in elaborate manuals and put together uh, uh, documents that show how things are done in a company, be it uh, how one makes products or, or even how one organizes it itself. I believe that the, these kind of technologies, collaborative technologies, wiki style if you wish, um, allow to get to a consensus quite fast. And um, I think that there are many examples in companies already, very large ex companies, that are using these technologies to elaborate manuals, to elaborate documents, to do knowledge sharing. And I think that any company that Actually, I, I'm not even going to qualify this. I think that all companies should be looking at these technologies to be able to put this uh, kind of, of uh, documentation together. On the other hand, we also uh, have heard a lot about the millennials, no? the digital generation, the new workforce that comes, that is used to use all these internet tools, all the collaboration tools uh, that have their own Facebook pages that are in MySpace and edit the songs and Correct. write them and do the whole thing. Do you see challenges for companies to incorporate these people in the future? Because they come with a different mindset. So, so a traditional company, what should be their approach towards integrating these 
digital generation people? These digital generation people, as long as they have been brought up with this way of working, of being, of probably they have been doing homework while listening to music and chatting into different chat rooms and simultaneously doing Skype and e-messaging e and hopefully being able to finish their, their undergraduate degree. Um, this kind of thing has to be translated into the workplace. Uh, otherwise, they'll get bored, especially if these people become knowledge workers in which their know-how is crucial to the company. If you don't keep them interested, these people will leave. I have no question. Actually, we are seeing this. These people leave. Usually, these people take jobs in, in um, IT department or in, in uh, creativity department in, in, in this kind of uh, uh, more knowledge intensive uh, jobs. And if they find uh, a, a very rigid, uh, old fashioned, if you, which I don't like the word, but you know, traditional uh, uh, way of working, they leave in no time because they cannot exert their, their way of working. I think that one should actually convert this into an asset as opposed to a problem. And the asset is that we can use all the technologies these people are used to to help them be more productive and more creative. We should make sure that they don't distract themselves too much, but that doesn't really mean that they cannot cooperate in multiple planes with different people in different departments to get to the goal that one has to get to. So I think that managers and companies should not be blind to this change of people that get into the workforce. Currently, they are very young. These people are getting into the workforce in their early 20s. Um, but they will keep coming. And in, in no time, people in the late teens and, and, and uh, uh, on early 20s when they join the workforce, all of them will have been brought up with this technology, you know, at least in our Western societies. And I think that this is a potential that we should not curtail. We should, in, in, in fact, leverage that as opposed to forcing them to work in the old-fashioned way. Uh, to finalize, um, could you give a couple of recommendations uh, to our, our uh, audience here regarding how to follow and how to watch and how to actually decide on Web 2.0? This is a very generic question in general. I'm not sure how to answer this uh, that serves to everybody. But I believe that all companies should have somebody looking at what kind of technological improvements can affect them, regardless of whether it's Web 2.0 or whether it is a new energy-saving technology. I think that somebody in every, some, all companies should have somebody looking at this. So depending on whether the company is very much information in intensive, and I think that companies are more and more information intensive in any case, uh, they should be looking at this harder or not so hard. Um, whoever does this technology uh, uh, um, outlooking uh, should be s finding ways of experimenting with these technologies. So I think there is no excuse for any company, be it the bus company or a car manufacturer or a studio making movies should be looking at how to incorporate this technology into their creativity. And we have only been looking at the inside. We have not been looking at how companies compete. Uh, in fact, your industry can be reshaped by uh, 2.0 strategies in, co in, in, in you know, social lending, as we've talked, or in, in uh, music uh, 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 financing. There are many things going on in industries in which some competitors have a completely different cost structure and a completely different user base that may, I wouldn't use the word disrupt, but it may in fact uh, produce uh, very interesting challenges for traditional companies. So I think companies should be looking both inside and outside. So they should be looking at what these technologies evolve. They should be looking at how young generations use these and be creatively try to incorporate them into their, into their practice. So, Professor Valor, I want to thank you for this conversation. And uh, we all know that we will talk more about how these things are going to affect the industry in the program that we have upcoming that will be available also as a web conference. Okay, thank you very much.